Hello, visionary, and welcome back to our channel. This is Raquel of Raquel and Davidian, Unleash Your Genius. Today, I'm going to be talking about a subject very dear to my heart, the dream rave. I am a big dreamer, and I have been trained in a lot of different shamanic dreaming practices and principles. And today, I'm going to be looking at dreams through the human design perspective. So I will see you on the inside. I'm going to start today's video with a story. For those of you who don't know my background, I'm a radical human design teacher. We do a certification program in learning how to be human design specialists. We have a for radical transformation certification. We have a certification in rave cosmology. I also teach manifestation by design. And now I am opening the door to this dimension of the dream rave and it's so frigging amazing so i want to start with a little story of my background before i knew i was a projector i grew up in a very superficial world i grew up in the san fernando valley and for those of you who know moon zappa and valley girl that was a backdrop to my growing up that song, the Galleria, the whole nine yards, the Gagney with a spoon, all of it. I didn't know anything about spirituality, shamanism, chakras, anything to this degree until I got to college. And I got introduced to my very first book, spiritual book. It was Ram Das. I was introduced to the I Ching. And then I fell into the Carlos Castaneda series. And I was obsessed. I read every single one of the books in the series. I would literally walk down the street with a book in my hand. And I remember how intense the stories were, the scenarios were, and what Carlos Castaneda had been through with his training with a shaman. And one day I went to bed and I said, I want my Nagual which in the Toltec lineage is a teacher, a shamanic teacher. And within a couple of days, I was walking through the courtyard at my university. And one of my friends said, hey, did you know that someone's teaching the Toltec wisdom? And the Toltec wisdom is the same tradition as Carlos Castaneda. It was not a curriculum at the university. This was a private student who lived literally across the street, who was teaching the Toltec wisdom from his living room. I showed up at his door and I will never forget when I walked in, the energy was a different vibration. It was a different frequency than the rest of my life. And I sat down the circle in his living room and I knew this was the world for me. He was teaching something called the Four Agreements. It turns out that was Don Miguel's son who was going to the same university as me. And at that time, this was before Don Miguel was famous. And before he had written the book, he was teaching what he called his Nagual's that lineage. I was brought to his community. I followed Miguel. I followed all of the trainings for years. I traveled all over the world. And one of the things that he taught was dreaming. And he also had ritual shamanic dream matotes, which were all night long dream rituals. Now, one of the things I don't talk about often is the time when I left college, I started a multimedia performance group. This was something that before I knew I was a projector, 
I had a download. I had a spiritual vision and I needed to create this performance group. It was like a stomp or a mini Cirque du Soleil. And one of the things I did was gather a group of 13 people together and I started teaching Matotes. We dreamed together on a monthly basis. And that group, we got successful very fast. There was a lot of high drama, a lot of pain, and a lot of addiction and things that go with your ego when you get exposed to small level of recognition. And I didn't know I was a projector. I was not recognized and it was excruciating. But I will tell you one thing. When I taught those matotes, this group went into multi-dimensions all the time. And it was in those realms where the creativity and the magic was birthed. And it was magical on that level. The creativity was magical. When I recently went to the retreat in Tulum, where I gathered a group of women together to do human design and spiritual awakening at the beach in Tulum, I was being guided to step more into dream technology, into awakening the dream matotes and the human design rave dream information started downloading. For me with human design, it was literally the piece of information that I needed <clears throat> in order to save my life. Because the spiritual realms that I was stepping into were just exasperating my not self and exasperating the pain of not being able to live correctly as a projector. And so it didn't matter how many spiritual tools I had, how many experiences I had, I was not able to ground and to live a normal, productive life. And now bringing the human design dream rave into my world is so exciting. I am going to be doing <clears throat> a series of trainings on the dream rave. You can watch the trainings here on YouTube. You can also ask questions and follow along in our Facebook group. I will put links in the description below. If you are watching this video at a later time, I will have links below where you can watch the replays and participate. So I want to start by sharing a little bit of the human design rave experience. So the first thing we know is that we are being run by the generator world. We know that 70% most people on the planet are generators. The generators have really um, been the energy force for everything that was built during the cross of planning, everything that's built in our society and capitalism, everything that is the working force, the nine to five, the freeways, the traffic, like all that energy is from the generator world. But when we go to sleep, we move from vertical to horizontal and our rave chart changes and our type changes. So we go to transition into an entirely new being when we dream. Usually, there are some cases where people move from generator to generator. There are cases where people might have the same type. But for the most part, there is a transition in type. So for my example, I move from a projector to a reflector when I dream. And this brings me to the majority of dreamers. The majority of people who are in charge of the dream realm are reflectors. And you might think, oh, isn't that amazing? The moon, the reflectors, the, all of the amazing dreams and synchronicities and psychic experience and multi-dimensions that all of these reflectors are leaning into. But that's not the case, according to Ra Uruhu. The reflectors in dream for most of the population are those people that are holding the program in place. Reflectors aura are sampling. They're more like Teflon. They are sampling and they are products of the program. And what the program is most similar to is the matrix. And so they are literally the not self reflector is literally holding that program in place. And they are seeing by tasting and sampling all of the environment 
what is off? Who's breaking the rules? Who's not following the matrix? Who's living a life that's outside of the matrix? And what they do is they wrangle them in or mechanically to follow along with the program. They are soldiers for the program in their not self. And so what Ra is saying is that if you are going to bed and you are not doing proper sleep hygiene, meaning you're not sleeping alone and you're not conscious of your dream rave, then oftentimes you're going to be a reflector creating homogenization in the dream world. So this is my invitation to the dreamers, to those in human design that want to know their dream rave, to come explore this dimension with me a little bit more. If you also are not aware of your dream rave, then you're very easily manipulated and controlled in the dream realm. Now, this doesn't have to be the case. Once you become aware of your dream type, then you also get exposed to the three realms with which you dream in. This is based on the gates that show up in your dream rave. There are three realms. There is the light realm, there is the demon realm, and there is the earth realm. Now, don't let the names fool you. Ra likes to use words that shock. He's a heretic and a shocker. <laughs> and so he'll use things like the demon realm to make you feel insecure and scared and, you know, wonder about those fear realms but it is nothing to be feared. So I wanna share with you a little bit about the light realm, the demon realm, and the earth realm, and then please follow along for the deeper trainings that I will be doing on the dream rate. The light field is the programming of the personality. The light field is not interested in the body. So in the light field, the body is where all the pain is, all the suffering is, all of the illnesses, all of the, um, aches and the, the bills and the physical world. So the idea here is that you leave your body when you dream. And if you don't understand how the dream world operates, you are launched into the illusion of sort of this, this joy and peace that happens outside the body. Now, we see this a lot with people who are disassociating or in the spiritual realms, maybe where they're doing what's called spiritual override. And so they may go deeper into the spiritual realms, the meditation, without understanding how this earthly, physical, and mental realm operates. And then the not self actually has a greater chance of taking hold and propagating its agenda of living as the not self theme throughout the life. So you kind of want to think about it as the program or the matrix is a sort of a field in the same way that you might consider gravity and that it's pulling people into their not self-conditioned vibration. And our job is to be able to pop outside of it and move into this place of witness. This concept of the witness is something we see many spiritual teachers talking about. In non-duality, there are many teachings that talk about this witness consciousness. And we also are going to be talking about it here in the dream rave as being the dimension that creates the greatest impact in those dream realms so that you are not being conditioned when you sleep. And some of you may already get the experience of being in the witness when you dream. The trick is when you wake up that you don't overanalyze, you don't go into the mind, and you don't let any of the programming from the dream manipulate your daily life. Now, this is a very different concept from the dream analogies or dream symbolisms that many teachers teach. Now, in the shamanic dreaming, they do not teach that at all. 
in shamanic dreaming, it really is about learning how to pop out into the witness, into the lucid dreamer, into that place where you are completely conscious in your dreaming. So in this way, I see how there's correlation between what Ra was going for in the dream rave and what I was being trained with, with the shamanic dreamers. Now, in the demon realm, yes, Ra does talk about that as the archetypal energy of the light and the dark, the relationship between energy and matter. So really, though, it's not about good and evil in the same way that we may think about or that all of the Star Wars or all of the epic archetypal energies that we see on this earth plane playing out repetitively in our collective consciousness. It's not about the good and the evil. It's about the energy and the matter. And so in the demon realm, we're talking more about matter. There is a struggle in the demon realm. There is the 28, the 38. These gates are within the demon realm. Now, if you stay tuned for my upcoming trainings, I'm going to go through this in more depth to explore your own personal dream realm. What we see in the, the light in the demon realm is that the opposition, so the pull between the light and the matter, uh, in our mind, because of our the ar archetypal energies between good and evil, it pulls us into opposition and it pulls us into struggle. And the programming of the planet is all based in opposition. And so in order to buy into the program, you need to be in opposition. Now, this is why we see so much opposition on the planet right now. We see the, the red and the blue. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to polarize us even more so that everything's being politicized and they're trying to pull on your cords of discomfort so that you choose a side and that you see one side as good and one side as bad. And as long as you're making that choice, you are in the program because what you we are needing to do is step out and see both sides from a higher perspective and send awareness and detachment so that we're not buying into the battle. The battle is basically, you know, one puppet master here, one puppet master here creating this um, polarization when it's really just control. And so when you see all any issue out there that's causing a stir in the body, including all the conspiracy theories, in including anything, and I'm not saying that conspiracy theories are wrong because a lot of them are right. And then actually it does stir up more angst and um, uh, annoyance at the corruption going on in the um, with the global elite. However, that anger, yes, it may trigger you, but the whole idea is that we are here to wake up. We are here to wake up from the um, pro program that is playing out. And so the light and the demon realm in the dreaming is literally programming you to stay in the duality and to stay in the opposition. But the interesting thing is even with the name demon realm, it's the earth realm that really is the most scary because the earth realm is where you are being homogenized and conditioned by the other side of the planet. You are literally taking on whatever the pain is, whatever the struggle is, whatever the heartache is going on in the earth realm, and you're taking it on in your dream and maybe waking up with that heartache or waking up with that conditioning or waking up with the pain and the fear of what's going on in the earth realm. And the earth realm can be some of the greatest pain, the wars, the illnesses, the violence, all of these things are in the earth realm. So what we're looking at in human design is you're looking at your basic human design chart. You're looking at your rave chart. You're looking at what three areas your gates are in, what's changing in your dream rave. So what gates are being added, which gates are being taken away. We're going from a 64 rave chart in your normal human design chart to 15 gates in the dream rave. 
And so some of them will be the same, some will be different, some will be added, some will be subtracted. And those are very important to know, to find out what type of dreamer you are and how to navigate the dream plane. So just to finish up, to complete my story, I had so many psychic dreams. I was astral traveling. I was in so many different dream dimensions that um, when I left San Francisco, my dreams literally just stopped. I was totally lucid. I had power dreams almost every night. I was so in that dream dimension that when my life fell apart and I needed to really ground and I needed to um, redefine myself, create a new career and do a level of healing that was not available for me as a performer, as a choreographer, I needed to heal. And the healing journey nourished me on the physical realm on such a deep level that all of my dreams stopped. And now that I know my dream rave and I understand what was going on in those realms, I wouldn't say all of my dreams stop. I would say that the majority of the dreams stop. And then I would have a psychic dream here. I'd have an insightful dream that I knew I needed to pay attention to. So I would have popcorn dreaming, um, but it was nowhere near what I was experiencing the many years that I was following the shaman shamanic dream techniques. While I was in Tulum, I realized that it was time to ignite the dream realm again, to explore the creativity, to be a witness, and to have more clarity in that realm while I'm grounded, while I have really the depth and the strength now on the material plane to hold for that type of journey. So for me, learning about the dream rave is so inspiring and so exciting. I cannot wait to share more about it. So if you're curious about your dream rave, please follow along with the trainings. You can join us in our Facebook group and I will be sharing more about how this dream rave operates and explaining the depth of the human design dream realm so that you can awaken to the creativity and the power that exists there while also learning how to live as your true self and not letting the conditioning of the dream realm force you into the not self when you wake up, which is what the majority of the population is doing unconsciously as they go to sleep and they live in their not self and they're not able to follow their strategy and inner authority. So thank you again for being part of this community. I look forward to these new trainings and to sharing in more depth the human design dream rave. That is a place where artists grow, explore all of their multidimensional talents and beingness. Odd started as um, an experiment. It came originally from a power journey I was on and decided had this huge inspiration and decided to um, call some people together and start a group that was based in a completely different way than any other group I'd been involved in. Just the whole foundation came from a different place um, where people were growing and exploring and trying new things. And it, it odd is an evolution. It started with a very small group in the, in the back of a living room with a really big idea.